Now we have used this equation p into variance to gamma is equal to c is equal to constant. We will use this equation afterwards. So I will write down this equation here. P into v raised to gamma is equal to c is equal to constant. So what is the use of this equation that we will see afterwards? For a derivative process, we use this equation. Now, we know four thermodynamical processes, <coughs> adiabatic, isothermal, isochoric, isobaric. All these thermodynamic processes are, are represented like this, uh, on PV diagram. Graphical representation of thermodynamic processes thermodynamic processes on PV diagram so add to the nodes Take a diagram of the ethical processes of the So, the diagram can be given like this. Pressure against volume graph. PV diagram. So, when we consider the isobaric process, pressure is constant. So, pressure is constant means the graph will be like this. This is a isobaric process. Isobaric process. So pressure is constant at this one. Then isochoric process volume is constant isochoric process then isothermal and adiabatic process Isothermal process. Adiabatic process. So we have represented all the four processes on the same PV diagram. Now, see this isothermal process, the PV diagram is steeper than this. Oh, sorry, this adiabatic process, the graph is steeper than isothermal processes. Why? The reason we should know, or it can be asked separately. And for that purpose, we have to find the slope slope of the graph. Slope of the curve on PV diagram is equal to dp by dv. Change in pressure dp upon dv. So this is the slope. 
a dB. There is a dB and therefore the slope is equal to dP by dV. In this case, slope is equal to dP by dV. So these two slopes are different. Now we will give the slope of all these four processes. We will start from first. Isothermal process, temperature is equal to constant. Therefore, by Boyle's law, by Boyle's law, PV is equal to constant. Is equal to K. Differentiating. This is equation E. Differentiating partially. Equation E. So P into dV plus V into dP is equal to zero. Since K is constant. Therefore, dK is equal to zero, and therefore, V into dP is equal to minus P into dV, and therefore, dP by dV is equal to minus P by V. Say this is equation B. So, slope. Isothermal curve is equal to dP by dV is equal to minus P by V. So I will write down directly here. dP by dV is equal to minus pressure of the gas volume of the gas. Now 
the last process is adiabatic process. Adiabatic process. So slope is equal to dp by dv is equal to dot dot dot. So here we have found the slope of isothermal process. Now we will find the slope of adiabatic process. So for adiabatic process we know this relation. For adiabatic process for adiabatic process P into V raised to gamma is equal to constant equal to C. Say this is equation one. Differentiating differentiating partially equation one. So P into derivative of V raised to gamma plus V raised to gamma into dv is equal to 0. dc is equal to 0 because c is constant. So this p into derivative of V raised to gamma is equal to gamma into V raised to gamma minus 1 plus V raised to gamma into dv is equal to 0. Therefore, V raised to gamma dp is equal to minus of P into gamma into V raised to gamma minus 1. And therefore, dp by dv is equal to minus of gamma into V raised to gamma minus 1 upon V raised to gamma. So, gamma over the gamma minus 1. So, this is equal to minus gamma into V raised to gamma minus 1 minus gamma. So, this is only minus 1. So minus gamma into V raised to minus 1. Happy right up. So P into V raised to. So minus gamma into P by V. dP by dV is equal to. So this is equation second. So this is equal to minus gamma into P by V. So see this last two rows. What is the conclusion? Conclusion. dp by dv for adiabatic process is equal to gamma times dp by dv for isothermal process. Gamma is greater than 1 always. Therefore, the slope of adiabatic is greater than the slope of isothermal. Isothermal. So the conclusion is like this. The PV curve for adiabatic is steeper that is larger slope larger slope than isothermal isothermal so this is the conclusion So we have to add this part.
this part is not given in our board books but for mcq purposes we will require it so this is about the four type of processes isothermal isobaric then adiabatic isochoric etc so these are the four types of processes that we have studied now let us see one more special type of thermodynamic process called as a cyclic process so what is the speciality in cyclic process that now we have to see so we will see cyclic process so what is meant by cyclic process the meaning is very simple cycle cycle means you can show like this so we start from any point and return to the same point so it is a closed loop this is also the same thing we start from any state of the system and after passing through number of changes series of changes we return to the same initial state so when the system returns to the initial state after passing through a series of processes or changes sir then the system is called as a cyclic process and it is represented like this it is a closed loop shown on the pv diagram so definition is like this definition of cyclic process a thermodynamic process dynamic process in which in which the system returns returns to its initial state initial state after after undergoing after undergoing a series of changes a thermodynamic process in which the system returns to initial state after undergoing a series of series of changes is called characteristics of cyclics process first characteristics since initial final states are same therefore delta p is equal to zero delta v is equal to zero delta t is equal to zero there is no change in temperature as delta t is equal to zero therefore delta u is equal to zero that is there is no change there is no change in internal energy of the system a problem initial and final states of time this is one more property this is second problem 
third property by first law of thermodynamics thermodynamics q is equal to delta u plus w since delta u is equal to zero therefore q is equal to the blue so all the heat energy supplied is used to perform the work then <coughs> next next on pv diagram Cyclic process is represented is represented by closed loop. So you can draw so many diagrams. Pressure against one. So the cycle is like this. A, B, A to B, and again B to A. So system returns to its original case. So all these are cyclic processes like this. You can show the arrow in any direction. So this is a cyclic. All these are cyclic processes. So cyclic processes are shown like this. So Cyclic process is the basis of working of all the heat engine. Heat engine, the principle is this cycle. The heat engine works in different cycle, and in each cycle, the internal energy is zero. The system returns to its original condition. Use fixed property. Cyclic processes are used in the working of all all heating engines. All heating engines. So this is about the cyclic process. The cyclic process is the property of the sun dialogue. It is a closed loop like this. So this area bound by the core, it gives the work done. And that work done is equal to this uh, BQ. So one more property that you can use uh, like this. This area will do the work done, but change in internal energy is equal to B like this. So, so you can add one more problem. Area under or area of closed loop representing cyclic process. Cyclic process gives area is equal to work done is equal to W this equation. So it is not zero. One means when the control double. No change in temperature, so D U is equal to zero. Like this. Volume of the change hoto hai. Initial and final volume there is circuit later volume of the change hoto should be the final volume. So this is about the psychic process. Now we have seen the meaning of free function. The basic example is bursting of a tire. So when a tire bursts, 
then there is a sudden change in the volume of the air the air inside the tire <coughs> rushes out and it is spread in the whole atmosphere but for that purpose no heat energy is used so there is no exchange of heat between the air inside the tire and the surrounding so it is a adiabatic process initially before bursting the tire the volume of the enclosed air is very very small but when the tire bursts then it expands to the infinite volume so volume of the air becomes very very large so it is a expansion but no heat is supplied and therefore in short uh, you can say that free expansion is the adiabatic expansion so the first point uh, that we can give is this free expansion free expansion is an adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion so for explanation we will give this second one there is no exchange of heat between system and environment example when a tire burst then air inside the tire rushes out and spread in surrounding atmosphere so that volume of air increases but no heat is used during the bursting of tire that is q is equal to dio like this it is a sudden process pre expansion pre expansion is a sudden or rapid process sudden or rapid process in pre expansion no displacement of the piston or any other surface takes the burden w 
is equal to 0. So Q is 0, W is 0, therefore by first law of thermodynamics, delta U is also 0. So you can underline this. Since Q is equal to 0, no exchange of PQ, W is equal to 0, therefore, by first law of thermodynamics, by first law of thermodynamics, delta U is equal to 0, no change in internal energy of the system. no change in internal energy of the system like this so in this process the pressure, volume and temperature all these three coordinates are changing very rapidly and therefore it is not in thermal equilibrium it is the P expansion is a rapid and uncontrolled uncontrolled process. Upon my work then take cases we look at work done during the volume change. One is a this uncontrolled free expansion and other is a controlled at constant temperature. Controlled expansion at a constant temperature. So this is an uncontrolled process of this. So the state variable state variable change of the system changes rapidly changes rapidly therefore there is no there is no thermodynamic equilibrium Thermodynamic equilibrium is not maintained uh, like this one. and therefore it is not plotted on QE diagram. Hence, it cannot be plotted. The process cannot be plotted on QV diagram. My example. Already upon a example is given that when a tire burst. Although after the example is given, when a balloon or football is punctured, when a balloon or football is punctured. It is free expansion, free expansion of air inside it. So this is about the free expansion, like this. So these are the say characteristics of free expansion. The best example is this: when the tire bursts. Then air inside the tire rushes out the volume water and spread in the surrounding atmosphere. For this, there is no heat is used. So Q is equal to zero. There is no exchange of heat. So Q is equal to zero. Therefore, it is a adiabatic expansion. So there is an increasing volume of the air, therefore expansion, and no heat is supplied for expansion. Therefore, it is a adiabatic expansion. Here, those property yet are given. So this is the sudden and rapid processes like this. 
म्हणजे आयशो थर्मल प्रोसेसच्या एक्झॅक्टली ऑपोजिट झाले सो देर इज नो डिस्प्लेसमेंट ऑफ द एनी पार्ट ऑफ द सिस्टीम इन दॅट प्रॉपर्ट दॅन इज इक्वल टू झिरो अँड दिस क्यू इज इक्वल टू झिरो डब्ल्यू इज इक्वल टू झिरो बाय फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ थर्मोडायनेक्स दॅट आय यू इज इक्वल टू झिरो देर इज नो चेन इन इंटरनल एनर्जी ऑफ द सिस्टीम लाईक दिस सो दीज आर द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ द फ्री एक्सपेन्शन so let us see the distinguishing factors between thermodynamic isothermal process and adiabatic process so already we know these the differences but we have to collect them so first one is definition it is a process in which it is a process in which change in pressure and volume change in pressure and volume express express at सेकंड डेल्टा टी इज इक्वल टू झिरो देर फॉर सिस्टीम इज इन थर्मल इक्विब्रियम सिस्टीम इज इन थर्मल इक्विब्रियम ऑन दिस साइड delta t is not equal to zero therefore system and its environment are not in thermal equilibrium there is no thermal equilibrium there is a thermal equilibrium third mathematically i will write down like this sir since delta t is equal to zero therefore delta u is equal to zero no change in internal energy in this case delta t is not equal to zero therefore internal energy changes there is a change in the internal energy and it is given by in this is delta u is equal to minus w because q is equal to d first law of thermodynamics upon which scale of the electric But 
delta u is equal to 0 therefore u is equal to w on this side delta u is equal to minus w but then you will do it in your middle level some heat is used for this expansion so total amount of heat does not remain constant because it is used for work done does not remain In this case, no exchange of heat. Therefore, total energy of the system, upper heat energy, total energy of the system remains constant. Infinity simile small infinity simile slope change that is it is quasi static process on this side it is a sudden and very rapid process not quasi static it is a sudden and very next work done is given by work done during volume change or pressure change pressure also changes W is equal to 2.3 not 3 NRT log to the best in of final volume upon initial volume or W is equal to 2.303 nrt log to the base strain of initial pressure upon final pressure so these are the two corresponding relations he said 2.303 upon natural log change the relative value it is upon upon those formula it is a relative work done w is equal to one formula in terms of volume change Final volume, sorry, final pressure, final volume, initial pressure, initial volume upon one minus gamma, where gamma is the adiabatic constant, and other formula was n into r into final temperature minus initial temperature upon one minus gamma, one minus gamma, eight. On QV diagram, the processes are represented by. अपन एक डायग्राम में दो ही लाभ लाओ। So 
these two processes are different. Isothermal. You open hot water then you Isothermal process is less steeper less steeper on this end. Slope of adiabatic is greater than slope of isothermal. PV curve of adiabatic is more steeper more steeper than isothermal. The Hikaji Pantara Namin. These are the distinguishing factors between the isothermal and adiabatic processes. Now let us see the distinguishing factor between isobaric process and isochoric process. So in this case pressure is constant. It is a thermodynamic process. Delta V is not zero, therefore some work is done. Mm. 
work done in isobaric process w is not equal to 0 and it is given by w is equal to p into d so w is equal to 0 w is not equal to 0 So, the equation is uh, like this, energy exchange is used to do the work done to change, also to change the internal energy. First law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics user. Q is equal to delta U plus W. So Q is not 0, delta U is not 0, W is not 0 on this side. Since delta V is equal to 0, therefore W is equal to 0, therefore first law of thermodynamics gives Q is equal to delta U of the hard W zero change in internal energy. Change in internal energy like this. What difference? PV diagram. PV diagram. So pressure one gram. So for isobaric process the graph is like this. P to B. On this end. You will have isoporic process A to B like this. Next one. Slope of the PV curve P is zero. zero. Slope of the PV curve is a increase like this. So these are the differences between these two processes, isobaric and isochoric processes like this. The remaining part of the chapter heat engine refrigerator etc. This is deleted for this year. We are not going to touch it. Next time we will solve the problem. If we get the time, then we will also try for this uh, uh, refrigerator and uh, steam engine working in short uh, like this. Uh. So we will stop here.